be his meme. opposition extension. First of all, why it is so abhorrent to use money to pay women back their equality, and secondly, the act of harm this does to women and to the feminist movement. First of all, three points of rebuttal. The first one is with regard to this question of closing the pay gap, because what we hear from proposition is that we must assume that the pay gap exists and will continue to exist. In doing so, we perpetuate it. Why? Because as Ben concedes to us when we offer him the POI, the reason employers discriminate against women isn't overt, they can hide it. They can use justifications that they don't admit to discriminate against women in employment. This encourages that. Why? Because they can recognize subliminally that women have greater financial freedom because they are being given an annual payment, apparently. This means that they have another excuse to give men an advantage in employment. We think that these are incredibly difficult to mitigate, but the more excuses we give to employers, the more justifications we give to, to employers, the more likely it is that the pay gap will persist. Secondly, with regard to this question of paying women as caregivers, no thank you. Again, this assumes that women are going to be caregivers. It continues to force them into those roles, even if they are, no thank you, working at the same time. We think that this takes a huge amount of women's free time, which is a feminist issue, and we think that it means that men are less free to do things like take care of their families. We think that that's a harm. No thanks. Thirdly, with, this, with regards to this question, we got the second half of whether or not this comes from male sexes. We think that this highlights something quite important, which is that unlike, say, the black community or certain ethnic communities, there is no common identity across women. That means that these funds cannot be used communally to systemically improve the opportunity of women. It can only be used for individuals towards individual ends, and will just be subsumed into household budgets. So, no thank you. To come to this first question of why it is so abhorrent to use money in this way, because we asked Jack what the common link between prostitution and dowry are. What we wanted him to say is that it's that women are paid for certain activities. Why is it problematic? Because the oppression of women throughout history has been so fundamentally tied to patriarchal economic systems. Women were bought and sold through trafficking and through prostitution, but most importantly, through the legalized system of slavery, oppression, and incarceration that, no thank you, for most of history was the institution of marriage. Women were bought through the narrative. All of, in, throughout all of history, men believed they were taking care of women. Men believed that women didn't need equal opportunity because it was being taken care of. That is the same thing that we are hearing in this debate. No thank you. It is abhorrent to pay someone for their equality. So what that suggests is that a person's equality has a price. We are no longer willing to accept that logic. To come to the second question of why it is we believe that this actively harms women, there's quite a number of areas we're going to cover in this. Because we are actually happy that nominal equality has been achieved. We think that that is one of the, the best things we can do in terms of achieving legislative change, because the problems that exist now are entirely perceptional, as we have heard from Proposition. We think, therefore, that enforcing the negative perceptions makes this worse. So firstly, we think, no thank you, that this reinforces the ridiculous notion that women are a minority. We haven't managed to get our heads around that one yet. Because it says that women are distinct from the state. That they can't take ownership, equal ownership, of the state apparatus and change things from the inside, no thank you. That the institution that is the state needs to give to the group that are women, rather than recognizing the reality, no thank you, that the two are interwoven and interlinked. We think that this limits women's capacity to actually achieve change within in that state because we are still seen as being separate from it. But the second thing is, and this is really crucial, is this idea that it drains political capital. And this has been brushed off by the proposition. And they've tried to tell us that this, you know, marks that women's issues are real issues. Like, we're already aware of that, Mr. Speaker. We think, uh, I'll take it first. So in the past, men paid women to get them to comply with the patriarchy. Now it pays them unconditionally as an apology for that. Doesn't that break the nexus between money and the patriarchy? No. <laughs> Fathers paid for their daughters and for everything that they needed without condition. Husbands paid for their wives 
without condition. The problem we have isn't what women are being paid for, no thank you, it's that women are being paid, it's that women are being bought off, it's that a price is being put on women. But the reason this drains our political capital is that it suggests that the job is done. It suggests, no thank you, that we have reached a point where we can understand women, particularly first proposition, can understand women. Why is that problematic? Because we too have biases. Because we too are raised in the world of easy bake ovens that, that Jack is so intent on telling us about. That means that we actually can't tell objectively what is best for women and so we have to facilitate greater choice. It has been conceded by Prof that the work of the feminist movement very clearly isn't done. And we think that it is important to remember that one of the ways in which this is true is that there is still a massively negative perception of feminism and of feminists. They are seen as angry women, they are seen as ugly women, they are seen as women, no thank you, who are trying to take things from the rest of society. That perception, whether they want to admit it or not, is enforced when money is taken out of your pocket and given to women in the name of the feminist movement. We also think that the huge problem that exists with reparations is that it is completely retrospective. The change that we need within the feminist movement is actually put equal opportunity, is a forward-looking facilitation of change. Why doesn't this work? Because what we actually want is a real discussion of how we can incorporate maternity leave into our economic system. What we want is for people to have pressures in workplaces. What we want is for a real discussion of sexual assault law. Why doesn't that happen when you're paying women? Because like they say, people don't know a lot of the time that oppression exists. People don't know a lot of the time that they're discriminating. It's things that we all, both men and women, do subliminally. And if you don't know that you're discriminating, the state giving you a reason that it's easier to discriminate, the state telling you that women are being taken care of, that women have more money because we're giving it to them, means that you're less likely to give that woman a job because you think that you don't have to. That means that yes, maybe they are closing the gap in pay, Maybe individual women are going to be a little bit wealthier, but there is still a massive, massive shortfall in, in, in reputation and in real equality. That's the problem we have. They have failed to solve it. They have actively harmed women we oppose.